Guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, September 21st, 2023, and today we are going to be talking about the 2024 House elections and a new electoral rating from Split Ticket, a well-respected political organization that does these temperature checks on the House electorate, on the House elections, and sees how they are trending, which direction they're likely going to go, and they've issued out over a year in advance their 2024 House ratings. Now, let's caution this and first say that some maps are expected to be redrawn. States like Alabama, New York, North Carolina are widely expected to have new congressional maps at the start of the next year. But in the meantime, we do have enough of an understanding for the majority of states, the roughly 80 to 90 percent of states that will keep their uh, congressional maps through the decade. We have ratings in all of these districts that give us a very general idea of which direction the House is going to go. And I'm sure you can tell from the title of the video that we know that the House right now is in limbo. It's very much within a competitive range, and Republicans previously won back in 2022 with a very narrow margin of 222 to 213. Coincidentally, in 2020, when Democrats won the House majority, they also won 222 to 213, obviously with the parties flipped. But this time around, the Democratic Party comes back out ahead. According to Split Ticket, Democrats currently hold 210 expected seats in 2024 to the Republicans' 203, leaving 22 total toss-up districts. Now, the map here is very, very interesting. The majority of these districts are safe red, safe blue, and that's because of political gerrymandering, intentionally drawing districts to make them very solid for either side of the aisle. And we can see that in almost every single state, a lot of these maps look very weird, and they're drawn weirdly to benefit one political party over the other. But in this 2024 House ratings, we still see that there's a considerable portion of the electorate here that is in a competitive position. And a competitive position means that they are in a swing district, one that is in the lean, likely, or even toss-up column. Now, we're going to be exploring a lot about what they say in terms of their model, but as a general overview for what we are expecting relative to 2022, when Republicans won the House majority by a very narrow margin, is the generic congressional vote. In 2022, according to Real Clear Politics, Republicans won the generic vote by 2.8%. The reason why I cite Real Clear Politics is because not everyone agrees on the actual outcome of the generic ballot vote. In some instances, people only consider uh, uncontested races. In some cases, people include the uncontested races but may not count singular races where there were multiple of one candidates, multiple Democrats on the ballot, multiple Republicans. And, you know, that's a problem that we can talk about, but that's not the point of this video. So we're going to use real clear politics as a point of reference because they did a pretty accurate polling average here. They had Democrats losing by 2.5, Republicans winning the popular vote in the generic vote since the first time since 2016. So that was Donald Trump's election. Republicans were building up this narrative. It was going to be a red wave, yada, 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 whatever it is. Republicans ended up winning by about 2.8%, according to Rochler Politics. Today in 2024, Republicans lead by a margin of just 1.2%. The reason why that matters is because it is narrower than where it was back in 2022. And looking at how close the House majority was, the Republican Party is within significant risk of losing many of these states. And considering how close some of these districts that were in the most competitive column, I mean, that's also something to consider as well. They were expected to be swing states when, yes, Republicans did come out ahead, but we can see here. Republicans plus 0.88, Republicans plus 0.42, Republicans plus 3, Republicans plus 3, Republicans plus 0 0.64, 1 0.6, 0 0.98, 3, right? So when you see these lower level single digits, sometimes less than a percentage point districts where Republicans are coming out ahead, you know that that one two point swing nationally actually can make a difference. It actually can sway the direction of the party and looking at how Democrats just need five seats from the GOP which could be Arizona's first, California's 13th, uh, it could be uh, New York's 17th, New York's 19th, New York's 22nd. Those five districts alone, if they had gone blue, Democrats would be in the House majority today. So that is why every single race matters. The House map is so, so competitive. And Democrats even, I think what's fueling a lot of this you know, shift in the House temperature checks is also recent redistricting orders that are helping Democrats, giving them a very, very clear path to winning back the House majority. Now, this video is about the split ticket model. We will spend a lot of time diving into it. But briefly, too, I do want to preface this and say that recent court victories make this decision to back Democrats being the likeliest party to win House control in 2024 even more possible, even more assuring to the firms that do so. So as Politico suggests, it gives Democrats that 
much closer step to winning the House majority. But if you're wondering specifically where that actually is, we can actually take a look. For one in the state of New York, the map by the appeals court, appeals court is the term for the Supreme Court in North Carolina, ordering to redraw the House map. This decision is one that Democrats are hoping, 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 uh, or sorry, this is the appeals court is a little bit different from the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court here changed partisan control in terms of, I guess, not necessarily partisan control. Democrats still held it, but a more liberal grouping of people. It used to be uh, four to three, somewhere around there, striking down the old congressional map, calling it a gerrymander. That chief justice soon left, and one of the three justices that sided with the Democrats on the court case became the chief justice. Now there's a new appointee who's even more liberal than their predecessor. So all around, very, very good news for Democrats. We can see here that the appeals court ordered a House redraw map, which makes it that much easier for the state Supreme Court to uphold this decision. And so seeing that, one alone, one redraw in New York could give Democrats the House majority. I mean that to be true, true, true. Because if you look at these seats that Republicans were able to win in the state of New York, this is not the uh, House map here. Actually, let me go ahead and take you over to this website if you're wondering what it is. It's uh, map.jacksonjew.com, an amazing, amazing website. But we can see here that in 2020, Democrats won 19 to 8. In 2022, it was 15 to 11. So Republicans did end up winning more. Democrats lost more, obviously. There was a congressional district lost by Democrats uh, because there was uh, redistricting and they axed a district, whatever it is. But, you know, 8 to 11, uh, that's pretty significant. And Democrats reducing from 19 to 15. So uh, something that I would definitely worry about if I was a Democrat. But look at these districts, right? New York 22nd, New York 19th, New York 17th. New York 4th, these were competitive districts. Had Democrats won them, it's very possible that Democrats would have won the House majority. But it's not just that. Not only is this map possible for Democratic victories, they're going to make it even easier. So that's one thing. Also in the state of Alabama, now they have to redraw the map there, add in an additional uh, Democratic district. I don't know why the Associated Press isn't loading today, but it gave hope to black voters, number one, because Republicans violated the Voting Rights Act. But two, a majority black district means a Democratic district through and through. Same thing is also happening in Louisiana. The Supreme Court unfreezing this redistricting case will take it up, will likely order a redraw in Alabama, as they already have. Then in Louisiana, New York set to have one. Ohio just uh, confirmed its congressional maps. Even though this was a red gerrymander, it actually backfired a little bit. If you look at 2020, Democrats had just four seats here. If you take a look at uh, you know uh, the map throughout the past 10 years, it has been four to 12. In 2022, it was 10 to five. And you know that's because the gerrymander wasn't drawn successfully enough that Republicans were able to crack the map even more. So problem here is that Democrats are still able to take a map that was meant to be 10 to 3, 10 to 3. I mean, look at the districts here, Ohio 11th. In a perfect reality, in a perfect reality for the GOP, this map would be 10 to 2, sorry, uh, uh, 13 to 2. That's the map they drew. It ended up being 10 to 5. Republicans actually wanted the map struck down because then the Supreme Court in Ohio would have given it to the Republican legislature to draw an even more aggressive map. But unfortunately, they said, this is too aggressive. It's already aggressive enough. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it. So Ohio is a loss for Republicans. Louisiana, obviously, Alabama, New York are obviously losses for Republicans, uh, which is what is fueling this conversation around court decisions and boosting Democrats. The only drawback for Democrats, and I mean this because it's only one, North Carolina is expected to redraw, which means the map will go from what it is now, 7 to 7, likely to something where it was in 2028 to 3, or even worse, 10 to 3, which means Democrats could be in for four losses here, which would obviously counteract. The losses or the gains in some other states. But keep in mind, if Louisiana redraws, it's one more. Alabama's one more. South Carolina could be one more. Georgia's expected to gain one more. Florida, the uh, appeals court there, also sided with the Democrats there. New York, six more. Ohio staying itself. So Wisconsin's expected to redraw. Well, we'll see what happens there, though, because re Republican uh, legislature there is really trying to take power away from the court. All around, though, more on the benefit for the Democrats. So when we go back to this, now we are going to dive into this. I promise you, I promise you, I'm not wasting any more time talking about court decisions. There's a reason why Democrats come out with the upper hand. Yes, the national environment is slightly more democratic, but it's a lot more than that. And let's go ahead and get started. So they talk about, number one, preface two, these changes in the maps, the ratings aren't going to change until their official forecast drops. They also mentioned that they cannot make ratings for maps that do not exist. Makes sense, right? So if there's a map redraw in North Carolina, right now they're using the old North Carolina map. But, 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 they do mention that. And I think it's something to be aware of. And it's something we can sort of see as an as a overall net gain. For Democrats. So they talk about the national environment. We do too. They make a very good point that the political environment is generally favorable for Democrats. That's true. That's a fact. Looking at the national environment, Democrats are uh, doing well in the generic ballot compared to 2022, statewide elections, uh, special elections, 
All good news for Democrats. Uh, they also see that, again, like I mentioned before, real clear politics uses a different calculation for generic ballot than split ticket. They say Democrats won in 2020 by 2.1. Real clear politics might suggest by four. Republicans in 2022 won by 1.6. Real clear politics might suggest three. So a little bit different here, but it's a swing of roughly 3.72%. And you can see that 2022, Republicans had so many shifts from 2020, right? So, so many shifts. New York swung by 14. Florida swung by 12. California swung by six. Nearly the entire country is red with far and few in between states. States like Wyoming, okay, North, North Dakota, singular district. Who, you know, why does it matter? Uh, Alaska is quite significant, but we've talked about that very, very intently. Overall, though, it's a red map. And so, you know, Republicans were definitely more favored in 2022. That's their takeaway from the last election. But we know that. So let's continue. Uh, they say 2022 was visibly more red. We know that. Um, but they point out some particular parts that there was a regional difference when it came down to the generic swing. For instance, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, and Ohio, the Rust Belt, the Blue Wall, Democrats actually improved. And while that doesn't seem like it's a super significant, 1.2, 1, 0 0.6, it could have been New York, 14. It could have been Virginia, 4. It could have been Alabama, 7. It could have been Mississippi, 8. That would have been cataclysmic to Democrats in 2022, but it didn't happen everywhere, right? And so that matters too. You find that Democrats also recently have started to outperform in special elections by an average of 5.8%. 5 .5 that is a very large amount. We know this. It's interesting, though, that Democrats don't make more of a play into their benefit in these special elections. I think that we've seen less conversations around these moral victories and more focus on 2024. I think it's a change in strategy. I certainly think it'll be more effective than focusing on these special elections. But Democrats aren't really acknowledging as much as I think I expected them to in the national media. But Democrats also have been very much moving in silence over the past year, Joe Biden's campaign uh, specific. And it suggests that Republicans may have a problem running deeper than persuadable voters in swing seats. Uh, just recently on Tuesday, Democrats flipped a Trump Republican district in the New Hampshire State House. Uh, the Democrat ended up winning by 13 points in a district that Donald Trump won in 2020. So things are happening. Moves are being made uh, by both sides of the aisle. And right now, the Democrats are coming out ahead. They continue to talk about uh, 2024 and how the national environment can be understood as bluer than 2022 at the very least. And considering how close it was, I have to remind you too, 222 to 213, it's close, which means this matters, which means it makes a difference. So talking about how the national environment is bluer, also something to keep in mind. They talk about mid-decade redistricting ratings changes. Okay, we've talked about that. We really don't need to dive into it too heavily. Uh, they're giving an assumption of Democrats winning the popular vote by roughly two D.2, so Democrats winning by two. They mention individual candidates, yada, yada, yada. They talk about their up upgraded ratings. But I want to take a look, too, at some of these districts. I think this is what really piques my interest, that a lot of these districts that are likely on the Democratic side were competitive back in 2022. Some of the lean Democratic districts were also toss-ups. Alaska at large, Illinois 17. New Mexico second, Maine second. In fact, in some cases, Democrats were expected to lose some of these districts that are now rated as lean Democrat. You can see here too, New York's third district in 2022. Let's see where it was rated. Uh, it was on the, uh, the uh, toss-up column. Republicans won by eight. Now, Democrats are the favorite. Obviously, that's an individual case. It's George Santos, but it matters, right? And when you look at some of these more competitive districts, for instance, we take a look at Arizona's sixth district. Republicans weren't expecting that to be competitive. Nobody was expecting it to be competitive. That matters. This one was won by 1.5%. Democrats spent $0 from their national DCCC campaign on this district. 1.5%. You can see it too. Across the country, some of these competitive districts, Iowa's third, Michigan's 10th, very, very competitive when they were never meant to be. Arizona is a particular point of interest, especially with Carrie Lake on the Senate ballot. She's expected to announce next month. We'll see what happens, right? You look at California too. California's 22nd district. That one should be in the toss-up column. David Valadao, always competitive. Mike Garcia and Christy Smith, always in a competitive race. Back again, right? The 41st district. That one was in the lean Republican column, no longer. Uh, California's 45th. That one should have been uh, right around here too. Yep, also in the lean Republican column. So we're looking at this and seeing that some of the lean red districts are now toss-ups. Some of the likely red districts are now lean Republican or toss-ups, like Calif uh, Colorado's third district, which actually was in the safe Republican column expected to win easily. You can see here Republicans won by 0.17% at Florin Boebert, uh, a lot more competitive than people were letting on. I mean, she was thrown into the same district. You can see just her two neighboring districts on uh, New York Times, Republican plus 24, 21, 22, 34, 23, 24, 36, Republican plus 0.17. So that's now in the toss-up columns made a lot of moves from safe to likely to lean to toss-up. It matters. 
it's important. And I think looking at how these toss-ups have evolved over time, Democrats have solidified some of their maps, it makes sense now that the map here is about 210 uh, to 203. And I think this is a good thing for Democrats, very obviously. It's a good sign. It means that they're on track to win it again in 2024. But it's certainly not where I think the Republicans expected to be. The 2022 House map was a letdown for the GOP in every regard. There were very few states where I think they really thought they shined, and that was with Florida and New York, and those will be short-lived. The Democratic Party knows they have a very strong opportunity at winning in 2024. I think a lot of it just depends on the general election, on Trump, on Biden, and the generic ballot. As of right now, though, if I was to call the shot, I think Democrats reclaim the House majority in 2024. With all these redistricting fiascos, new court orders, I still think Democrats come out slightly ahead. And in a map where just five seats make the difference, I made the same case in 2022 for why I thought Republicans would win House control. This really could make or break the entire election. These competitive districts that will be redrawn and also the very narrow ones from 2022, Democrats seem to be slightly improving upon nationally and district-wide. And I think that will give Democrats the victory in the 2024 House races, and consequently, the House majority. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already, and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch, and then a playlist for my 2022, uh, for, wow, House election videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later today.